Hello, I'm Broadway's Josh Grisetti, and this is Starstruck Media. Let the interviewing commence. Hey guys, it's Laura from Starstruck Media, and I'm here with, as he said before, Broadway's Josh Grisetti. Woo! So, you've been up to quite a lot lately. You were on Broadway, and then you went to Japan, and now you have a book. So, which we all got to, of course. Um, but how has this whole adventure been going for you? Uh, the whole adventure has been going very well. Uh, we're at, we're kind of you know this is the tail end of it now. I've yeah. I've, I've survived the adventure um, all over the all over the Broadway stage and the Japan stage. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, so it's good. That's good. Now before we get to your career so far, how did you ultimately get bit by the acting bug, as they say? <laughs> They, well, I was always like a class clown, yeah. um, and then I saw, and I tried all these sports and things, and I was terrible at all of them, uh, and then I saw my sister doing theater mm -hmm. uh, in, in uh, high, school and high school and community theater and stuff, and I was like, oh, that looks like fun, I could do that, yeah. and, uh, and, and then it kind of happened, and if, once I started doing it, I just never really went back. Now, what were some of your favorite roles or ch roles that like changed the way that made you want to do this as like a career? Mm. Well, uh, the first few things I did were just like literally in like middle school and stuff, mm -hmm. so they were totally goofy, weird yeah. little things, and uh, uh, and they were fun, but I you know you can only take them so seriously. Yeah. And I didn't know I could sing at all um, uh, until they were casting the community theater in my little hometown mm -hmm. in Virginia was casting 1776. And they needed a kid to play the courier, if you know that show or that role. But they're bringing it back to Encore. I know Encore is going to do it. And, uh, but uh, so uh, I, I went in for it and, and and got you know got cast as the courier, and it was the first time I had ever done anything that had any sort of serious undertone because yeah. yeah, I was just doing course. goofy kid stuff. Yeah. And uh, and I don't know, I just suddenly, I really fell in love with it. And it took me years to figure out why that role was so great at that time. Because I was a kid and I had no idea what I was doing. Yeah. And, and I was terrified to sing in public. And in that role, uh, is he's he never speaks the whole show until the end of the first act. He comes in when Congress is out of session. Yeah. And he's just delivering letters and stuff. But he gets in and then uh, somebody asks him, one of the janitors basically says, "How are things going out there? You know, on in the battlefront." Yeah. You know, and and, uh, and then he sings this amazing number. He's like, "Well, uh, I saw my friend get killed, and here's kind of how it happened." And and it's just the most, and it's so innocent and so yeah. like beautiful. And and to have a kid who had never sung before, it was like yeah. the perfect thing. So now I don't want to see anybody do it, <laughs> do that, do that part unless, except, except for me. No, uh, but I only want to see a kid do it. I want to see like. Yeah. A, 14 year old, you yeah. know, who is like a little nervous. Like, that's yeah, what I want to say. Of course, of course. Um, so, you made your official Broadway debut last year, and it should have been you. Mm -hmm. Great show. Um, it must have been exciting getting to work on a brand new show. Um, what was that experience like for you? It was amazing. I mean, the cast was so, they were all pros, and I was like, yeah. I was the lowest <laughs> man on that show, which is really inspiring to look up to everybody you know, you're surrounded with. Um, and then David Hyde Pierce was directing, and I have exactly. always been a huge fan of his. Um, and so it was. It was. It was like a, It was a, a, seriously like a dream come true because I'd always wanted to not just be on Broadway but originate a role. Um, and so to have that opportunity and to make a cast album and to do all yeah. those things that as a geeky theater kid you dream about doing, um, it really it checked off a lot of boxes for me. So I had an absolute blast. One of my favorite parts of that show is where you ran through the audience <laughs> and like scream, like we're yelling, but oh, <laughs> that was so awesome. Yeah, it's a fun time. <laughs> So on it should have been you, as you mentioned before, you got to work with some of Broadway's best, like Tyne Daly, Chip Zion, Harriet Harris, Sierra Boggess, of course. And coming up as um, a fresh face, did you take away any lessons doing that show? You probably, there's probably an end. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you, I think you, you, you take away lessons from every show, yeah. good and bad. You know, you learn things in both directions of, uh, uh, but you know, a Broadway show and a new Broadway show, like that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's a lot of just sort of professional learning curve. And, one of the best things I think I learned was I was so nervous, not by opening night, but on the first preview, the first time anybody had seen this thing yeah. in public. Um, and, uh, and and I thought, well, I'm probably nervous because it's my first Broadway show, and, and I'm just that's just a big milestone. So I've, I put too much pressure on myself, and yeah. so now I've got to relax. And, 
and whatever. But then I looked around and saw these pros like Sierra and Chip mm -hmm. and Time, everybody, and everyone was nervous. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, if these like, <laughs> if these people have the right to, to be nervous, then yes. I feel totally validated. <laughs> validated. Yeah. Okay. Um, not too long after that, you ended up doing Prince of Broadway in Japan. Um, do you mind explaining a bit about that show and? Because people may not have heard about it since yeah. it's not, it wasn't on Broadway. Right. Uh, well, Prince of Broadway is uh, how Prince, it's, it's based on his work. It's a review of his uh, sort of the entire lexicon of the things he'd done. And if you are watching this, I would hope you would know that Harold Prince, it, you know, a legendary yes. theater <laughs> uh, And so what's, what's beautiful about that, about that show uh, is that when you put all of those massive uh, iconic musical theater yeah. pieces together into one night because it's it's all of Sondheim's yeah. work for the most part all of his major shows yeah. um, uh, it's fan of the opera um, it, it's it, it's 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 intense it's, <laughs> yeah it's a vita it's it's so many of these mm -hmm. giant shows and so to see them all together is just overwhelming and, and fantastic and so it was an absolute blast and you know hopefully they'll bring it into New York yes. Hopefully, let's make it happen, because <laughs> uh, I want to see it. Uh -huh. um, now, since the show, you said, was a review of um, Mr. Prince's career, what were some of the numbers you got to do? You mentioned the shows, and did you have a favorite? Ooh, uh, yeah, um, I did uh, George in She Loves Me. I did the MC in Cabaret. <laughs> I did Hero in Forum, uh, and I did Melina in Kiss of the Spider Woman. Uh, and I would say my favorites were uh, <laughs> were Melina and the MC. Yeah. And Melina, I think because I didn't really know that show very well before mm -hmm. I did this, and, uh, and it's just a little departure from what I normally do in yeah. theater, so it was fun to do that. And then uh, the MC, because it's the it's most... The MC. Yeah. It's the MC, yeah. <laughs> do I need to explain? <laughs> no. Um, so you got to travel to to Japan and perform for these new audiences. Were there similarities and differences between the audience there and like on Broadway? I mean, yeah. I'm sure it's a completely different experience. Yeah, you know, people, there. people warned me going going over there that um, that audiences in Japan were really quiet and that they didn't applaud after numbers and just because culturally that's what they yeah. do. They just they said they're very appreciative of it, but they don't make sound until the end of the show because yeah. they don't want to miss anything and it's like considered rude or something. Um, it's just a cultural difference. Well, that has changed literally over the probably the last like five years apparently because mm -hmm. people who were there seven years ago <laughs> uh, would tell me those stories. Yeah. Um, and then we got there and they were loving every, at the end of every number they would cheer. Um, uh, uh, the one thing they didn't do is they don't laugh out loud. <sighs> It's very rare. That's, and I it, feel like that's complicated for an act. Like it's an complicated actor, for a it's like, comic character. Yeah, actor, it's, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh man, like uh, when you see them smiling and, and yeah. seeming to enjoy themselves, and they, they cheer for you after the number is over, but in the middle of the song, you drop a joke or do something goofy physically or whatever, and it's just silence, which for an American audience, we would yes. feel like, uh oh, it feels like egg on your face. Yes. But there, you kind of got used to it. Yeah, well, that's good. I feel like it's a mentality thing that you have to Totally, it just, shift, it just you know? shifts, yeah. Um, now, can you tell us any fun story from over in Japan? Well. Because <laughs> no. you know, we love to, the fans love to hear these crazy <laughs> stories, so why not go now? I mean, the, there's, I mean, there's a lot of <laughs> stories, some more appropriate than others, but uh, uh, I'd say the, the, the most overarching fun theme about going to Japan is that the fans there put American fans to shame. Like they are, so, because there are super fans here, but they're so rare that generally the cast of the show knows who they are. Yeah. Like we know their names, mm -hmm. <laughs> we know what they look like. Yeah. There, almost all of them are super fans. <laughs> like they're all, I, I mean, the ones who are uh, dedicated yeah, enough like to, yeah, 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 they, they, they uh, and they just, they shower you with, with uh, uh, gifts and letters and oh, whatever wow. uh, uh, to the stage door. And they'll wait at the stage door every day. Um, uh, and, and so it's it was just a totally um, <laughs> yeah, kind of I funny. So the, the best part of it was the things that they would send you. Because it, it ranged from like, <laughs> it ranged from these sort of high end items that you'd be like, wow, well, I, I don't know that I should accept this. This is, <laughs> I got, you know. Um, but obviously, if you're doing well and you want to 
share yeah. that with the people that you like to watch perform. That's fine. But uh, and then you get the weirdest. Like somebody sent me underwear. <laughs> that was my favorite. <laughs> that somebody sent me underwear. Um, and you just you know, uh, and then like plastic sushi. Um, and just odd things. Yeah. I saw a few of the face masks too. Oh yeah, the face masks. Like well, the it's very. The girls are posting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we all got them, and they were actually very nice for the skin. But um, they, it's like a big thing over there, the face yeah. masks. So yeah. they, they they give them they give them out. <laughs> now let's move on to one of your biggest accomplishments. Um, you recently became an author. I did become um, an author. Your new book is called God in My Head. Oh, I look. Um, There's a copy of it right here. <laughs> and since it's so new, do you mind explaining a bit about the premise? Um, mm. Because it came out of an interesting situation. Yeah, it, it's totally, it, it has nothing to do with theater. I mean, I think that's the first wow. thing that's probably worth noting, considering this is a theater yeah. sh show. You know, um, uh, uh, it, it, I, I don't even reference the fact that I'm an actor in the book. I talk about like my career yeah. kind of generally, but mm -hmm. I don't say that I'm an actor necessarily. But uh, uh, it, it's, it's just a very personal story that <laughs> was uh, about well, don't spoil it. But I don't want to spoil it. You know, yeah, you know. I mean, it's called God in My Head, so you probably have an idea of what the story is already. The subtitle is the true story of an ex-Christian who accidentally met God, and the way that I accidentally met God was uh, I have a severe dental phobia, and uh, so, yes, I think there's a lot of people who do. Um, so the first part of the book is straight up memoir explaining okay. what happened in my early childhood that gave me a serious phobia as an adult. Uh, the problem was that once I became an adult, I started sort of self-medicating around mm -hmm. going to the dentist anytime yeah. I had to have any work done. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, because it just freaked me out, I wanted yeah. anything to like take me down a notch. So uh, one day in particular that was particularly bad, I, uh, I, I just, I took anything in my house that I had around, like old, old muscle relaxers and painkillers and you know, I drank alcohol with them, and then I went and took a Xanax that they gave me, and then they put me on nitrous oxide. And everything that was in my system um, uh, basically put me into <laughs> a deep, deep hallucination. Um, uh, uh, so, and it, which is, you know, because you're, all those chemicals are all yeah. downers, so they're, they're lowering your heart rate, mm -hmm. you're taking in less oxygen, but when you replace half that, or 70% of that oxygen mm -hmm. with nitrous oxide, yeah. It, it, your brain just doesn't have enough yeah. oxygen to function, so you slip into sort of this, <laughs> um, literally a, a hallucination and this sort of um, half awake, half asleep mode. Yeah. Um, and so in that mode, I had this this trip that um, that I met the creator of the universe, and he explained all these crazy, mysterious things. Which you have to read about in the book. Which I'll have to read about in the book. We won't go into details. Yeah. But uh, uh, that's the premise of the book. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Insane. Light reading. <laughs> yes, very light. But I do tell it in like a light tone. I, I, I don't take it too seriously because it's a pretty wild ride. Yeah. So, um, so I try to put humor on the darkness and well, the heaviness. That's Just good. saying. Um, now, what made you want to take this event? I mean, obviously it's a huge event, but writing it down for other people to read. You know, I never wanted to write it down because, mm -hmm. in, in fact, as that as the hallucination was ending, one of the things I asked God in my head. I was like, what am I supposed to do with all of this information you yeah. just told me? These are all so yeah. huge ideas. Like, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Am I supposed to write a book? Am I supposed to preach this to people? Like, mm -hmm. am I supposed to never say a word about it? What am I supposed to do? And he was totally chill, like he was the whole time. And he was just like, look, uh, <laughs> you don't have to do anything. Yeah. Because I'm God. Um, so if I want something to be done, it'll be done. Yeah. Like, you just... Do you? Yeah. If you feel like writing a book, write a book. If you don't, don't. And so I walked away from it thinking I'm never going to write this down because it's it was just my personal story, right? Mm -hmm. That was just meant for me to see and to yeah. hear. And so it was mine. I told friends about it, whatever, but it, that was kind of the extent of it. And then somebody gave me a book that was very similar, mm -hmm. um, that was totally pro-Christian. And I grew up with Christianity, so I, I you know I know that world pretty well. Um, uh, and the lens that I saw my hallucination yeah. through was through the lens of the Christian mm -hmm. traditions. Um, uh, even though it was decidedly outside of those traditions, yeah. it was within the lens, if that makes any sense. Um, and so somebody else wrote this book called uh, Heaven, is, Heaven is for Real. Oh, that's a movie. I saw that movie. And they made a movie out of yeah. it. And it is, it, I, I just found it so disingenuous um, because it was a kid who, yeah. um, they pa pass it off as a near-death experience with this mm -hmm. kid, but the truth was he, he had an emergency uh, appendix mm -hmm. uh, surgery 
and he could have died in that city because it is an emergency. Yeah. But he didn't. He, his heart never stopped beating. He, his lungs never stopped breathing. Mm -hmm. Like he was alive, but he had he was under anesthesia and he yeah. had this hallucination yeah. of going to heaven and meeting Jesus and yeah. and his father wrote it all down into this book. Well, his father was a Christian minister. And all of it, were, it was like, it was all so yeah. just like, everything the Bible says is exactly right, and here's proof of it. Yeah. And they, and literally, it, yeah, it, it's um, like yeah. used as proof. Mm -hmm. and, and it drove me so crazy that I was like, well, if he can write that story down, why can't I, I can yeah, write my story down and just say, here's a different viewpoint. Of course. Maybe it isn't proof. Maybe it's just super interesting and something to yeah. think about, but it's not necessarily validation of, yeah. of every, every belief, you know? But, yeah. You know. And um, so this sort of, Follows. What were some of the challenges of getting your experience out on paper that would make it understandable for like a reader, sort of? Like, well, what, was, I mean, what were the, the challenges of writing it, basically? Well, the hardest thing was that, uh, um, I, although my hallucination was um, very articulate and mm -hmm. very lucid in a lot of yeah. ways, it was not told in like a linear way, mm -hmm. um, uh, in the sense that time sort of didn't exist yeah. in this place and um, and so I got these kind of waves of different pieces of different parts of the puzzle mm -hmm. um, in, in, the, in kind of trippy ways <laughs> uh, as it were um, and so to write it down in a cohesive way that actually makes yeah. any sense mm -hmm. I had to kind of structure it, I had to structure mm -hmm. it, structure a hallucination which is, okay. I'd say that's the hardest thing to do so I, I sent this to maybe a dozen or so people um, friends that I trusted and stuff yeah. and, and and had a lot of feedback over, it took me like three years to do the whole thing. And uh, over that time, everybody kind of said, okay, this is the part that I, I, I totally understand, it's totally clear, I have no idea what you're talking about here. Yeah. Uh, you've kind of already said this once, because it ties here. It was like all that kind of stuff, yeah. um, but it was, and I'm not a writer, like, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, everybody's a writer. Everybody's a writer, but, yes. uh, but I'm not an established writer, so it was a big learning curve just mm -hmm. doing the whole thing. Okay, awesome. And or are there any lessons that you want people to take away possibly after reading the book? Or some authors have that, some don't. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I would hope, that all I want is for it to be thought provoking. All I want, mm -hmm. there's no lesson that I want to give anybody. I just think, um, I just hope that it raises questions and makes people yeah. think, oh, that's interesting, what do I think about that? Because I think there's a lot of questions about the meaning of life and um, whether we have any purpose here and what God is or isn't or if there is one at all and mm -hmm. all those things um, uh, that I, uh, I think you can easily glaze over and not mm -hmm. address but I think uh, some of them are really worth addressing because they, they affect you know who you are as a person and how you view the world in a positive or negative way and so I hope that this uh, at least encourages people to ask themselves those questions. Awesome. Yeah. And what has been the most rewarding experience of your journey so far do you think? My journey? Like your theatrical journey? My theatrical journey? journey. <laughs> my, life, my spiritual journey. Um, there's so many highs, you know. Um, <laughs> that's so hard to answer. There's, okay. there's, that could be answered by the name of a show that's, you know, yeah. a thing. That could be answered by the, the show that paid me the most. That could be answered by <laughs> the people who have come into my life who meant the most to me yeah. and changed my life the most. There's so many ways, so I, I don't know. Well, but look I, at that answer. Yeah, it's, it's a hell of an answer. But I would say this past year has been one of the most fulfilling years of mm -hmm. my life. 2015 was yeah. a really uh, a year that will never be forgotten in my sort of timeline. Yeah. For a lot of reasons, personal and professional. Yeah. So um, I'll just I'll, I'll not name a specific thing other than to, to give you the year, which was <laughs> sounds <that> year. good. <laughs> um, so what's next for you? God only knows. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, you know, they, they seriously want to bring uh, Prince of Broadway in, mm -hmm. um, and depending on when they do it, yeah. how they do it, who knows, you know, where we'll all be, yeah. but it would be great if that, if the Japanese cast could be reunited, which is oh, the intent, yes. they, want, they want to do that, but because yeah. uh, some of those performances, particularly like Tony Yazbek, who's oh, a, yeah. just a genius, um, uh, it, I, I, you know, I, it would be a criminal thing if, uh, if Broadway audiences didn't see what Japanese audiences saw. Yeah, um, and yeah for, real shame. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and for Hal's sake, I mean, yeah. it, it's it's such a celebration of his oh, life that yes, I, I, yes. it, it, uh, anybody who loves theater needs to see the thing. So mm -hmm. hopefully it'll be done. Um, but who knows? In the meantime, this is pilot season, mm -hmm. so we're I'm out there pounding the pavement with the rest of LA and New York, um, <laughs> trying to book TV shows. So you know, it, who knows? Tomorrow I could have a series. I, you know, I can replace somebody on Broadway. <laughs>
there's so many options. And anything to say to your fans? What are they called? Gr Grizzies. Grizzies. How do you not know that? <laughs> everybody, oh, everybody knows who the Grizzies are. Uh, yes. Grizzies, um, I love you. I love my all my, my huggable minions, as I like to call you. Um, all are welcome <laughs> to join the Grizzly uh, fan club. Uh, uh, the biggest thing, like we, this, the, my book officially launched literally yesterday. So this is like literally fresh off the thing. And one of the most amazing things, and I think it's only because I have this pool of people who follow me and, yeah. and support me in this way. Um, enough people bought this book overnight to put it to the to the number one bestseller in the psychology or religion kind of section, Ooh, the spirituality definitely. section of Amazon. And that is a huge, like that is so awesome yeah. because it actually helps me reach a whole new group oh, of people yes. because now it's at the top of a list and they're like, oh, what's this book? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, for a book that is essentially self-published, you know, yeah. uh, this it, 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 it's uh, it's not easy to, to do that. And the only reason I could is because of my Grizzies. So it, it's like that kind of support, even in yeah. stuff that has nothing to do with theater, yeah. uh, that's very special to me. So yes, yes. you special to me, y'all. Well, thank you, Josh Grizzetti. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.